Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. It's not here yet, but it is on the way. We're going to begin Local 4 News at 5 with the weather and the threat of severe weather heading into tonight. Glad you're with us. Paul is tracking the threat of multiple rounds of storms into tonight and into the overnight hours. So let's get right over to Paul Gross and what he's tracking on Storm Tracker 4. Paul, we've still got some time, right? That's a great point, Karen. Right now, there is nothing going on here in the metro area. We are high and dry, so uh, whether it's uh, uh, just want to go out for a little walk, you want to grill, anything like that, we're fine right now. But you can see back to the west here, we have a good cluster of rain here. Now, we have a couple of things that we're watching here. We have this right here. That's all moving eastward, and that's not going to really be a factor in our weather. Now, notice a very severe storm here has developed uh, in parts of Wisconsin. This pink area here, that is a new severe thunderstorm watch that was just issued. So. Here's where we're at. So we're again going to not have anything really going on right now, but the model, this is a new model. It's now starting to de-emphasize the severe threat for the early to mid part of the evening, but then really emphasize the storms that come in later this evening. This is very interesting. We're going to talk more about that coming up in about 10, 15 minutes, but then all of this stuff is going to be gone by seven o'clock in the morning. In terms of threats, we could have wind gusts that could approach 70 miles per hour tonight. So we'll have much more coming up, but don't forget local forecasters app. This is the perfect night to have it. Real-time radar, you get instant notification, it watches warnings. Everything you need is on our app. It is free. Just either go to the App Store or just scan your phone right up here on the screen. The QR code, it'll take you right to the spot where you can download the nation's best weather app. I'll be back in just a few minutes, guys. We want to get you to breaking news happening right now in Warren. Ten Mile east of Dequinder is closed right now after a crash involving a semi. Police tell us the semi overturned. Drivers should avoid the area. No injuries have been reported. We'll let you know when it's all cleared up. Staying in Warren, we're learning chilling new information into a house explosion over the weekend. That home had bombs and thousands of rounds of ammunition inside. So much so, Warren's police commissioner said it would be enough to blow up the entire block. We want to get to Priya Mann live tonight. And Priya, this man apparently was on a federal watch list. That's right, Karen. And he was also under investigation by the Warren Police Department Special Operations Unit for several months. The police commissioner says the man was working on a homemade device in his garage when it went off, setting the home on fire. And the commissioner says what detectives found inside this home near 8 Mile and Gratiot was disturbing. Well, it's not normal. It's pretty scary because it happened right across the street. Neighbors saw the 38 year old man walking out of his home covered in blood after the explosion that started a massive fire and he came out uh, with his hand gone like three of his fingers gone. His body looked very burnt. It was kind of like really gruesome to see, you know, scary. This person had the potential probably blowing up the entire neighborhood. Inside the home, police found several explosive devices, 4,000 rounds of ammo, and a dozen guns and rifles. Oh, that's crazy. I don't know what he would be doing with all that ammo. He's like trying to go to war or something. I don't think they, the neighbors knew that this person was that dangerous, that they were living really, quite frankly, next to a time bomb was just ready to go off. Warren Police Commissioner Bill Dwyer says the suspect was on a federal watch list and being investigated by the Special Operations Unit for felony crimes that may be linked to domestic terrorism. It was something like, you know, certainly an arsenal that could have been fortified and we could have had some major problems in the future. I'm glad it happened the way it happened so nobody got hurt, you know. Nobody else. Yeah, right. Neighbors say they heard several loud booms as the fire spread from the garage to the rest of the home. So I was uh, afraid that it would like keep going off if there was more bombs in there. It's disturbing and it's something that if I was a neighbor, uh, I would have never expected this. That's right, and thankfully this fire did not spread to any other homes and no one else was injured. This homeowner, though, did lose a hand in the explosion. He remains in the hospital with second and third degree burns over half of his body. If he does survive, uh, the commissioner says he will be in the hospital for months. MSP bomb squad took those explosive devices. Uh, Warren police are investigating. The man has not yet been charged. Reporting live in Warren, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Frightening situation indeed. Thank you, Priya. Let's turn now to day two of the January 6th hearing and uh, more explosive testimony today. Witnesses laid out what they say was a disinformation campaign led by President Trump in order to hang on to power. Susan McGinnis in Washington with more. Susan. Well, the committee laid out what it says is evidence of the big lie, Donald Trump's plot to spread false information that he won the election, a plot that led to the January 6th insurrection. 
Day two of the January 6 hearings focusing on Donald Trump's efforts to spread false information to overturn the 2020 election. Millions of Americans believed him. The committee today laying out a case that Trump planted the seeds of fraud before Election Day and declared victory afterwards. The only way we're going to lose this election is if the election is rigged. Remember that. Frankly, we did win this election. We did win this election. Fired Fox News journalist Chris Steyerwalt, who worked on the Fox political desk during the night the network called Arizona for Biden, describing Trump's chances of the election going his way. You're better off to play the Powerball uh, than to <laughs> have that come in. The committee illustrating that despite advisor after advisor telling Trump there was no widespread fraud, he continued to push the false claims. You can press a button for Trump and the vote goes to Biden. She said dead people are voting. Indians are getting paid to vote. Told him flat out that much of the information he's getting is false. Former Attorney General Bill Barr debunking Trump's claims, including that Dominion voting machines were rigged. He's become detached from reality if he really believes this stuff. Trump ignoring all counsel but listening to his then attorney, Rudy Giuliani. A big truck bringing in 100,000 ballots in garbage cans, in waste paper baskets, in cardboard boxes and in shopping baskets. The committee trying to prove the former president pushed a false narrative to remain in office and convinced his followers they must fight to keep him there. While the committee says there's ample evidence, it is undetermined whether criminal charges could be brought against the former president. In Washington, Susan McGinnis, Local 4. All right, Susan, the hearings are set to resume Wednesday at 10 a.m., and you'll see them here live on Local 4. If you normally check your retirement accounts mm. on a Monday, you might want to hold off. Uh, economic turmoil sending serious jitters across Wall Street. And now concerns about inflation causing a recession sent the markets reeling today. Jason Colthorpe in the newsroom for us tonight following a rocky day really all across the board. Boy, Rocky is uh, a gentle way to put it, Karen. It was like a bouncing ball for the Dow today. Massive swings marked the day, but all in the red. The only thing that was up, mortgage rates. Let's look at the Dow's close, which was a little more than an hour ago now. The index down 874 points. It started the morning off more than 800 points and uh, had wild swings of several hundred points in short time frames. Then the tech-heavy Nasdaq dropped by as much as 4% in the morning trading and finished the day down 530. The S&P 500 was off more than 3% during the day and closed down 150 points. In fact, the S&P ended the day in bear market territory, which is, means it's off more than 20% from its January high. Much of this sell-off, by the way, attributed to investor concerns that the Fed will continue raising interest rates to try and cool inflation. And it was also a pretty bad day for cryptocurrency as well. Bitcoin lost more than 15% of its value after one of the largest lenders paused withdrawals. We're in the newsroom tonight. Hopefully we'll have better news on this tomorrow. Jason Colthorpe, Local 4. All right, thank you, Jason. A judge denies Perry Johnson's request to get on the August primary ballot. The challenge was denied just today. The judge says it was on account of the campaign's failure to demonstrate that the Michigan Bureau of Elections did not adequately assess the validity of the signatures submitted to get on the ballot. You recall Johnson's campaign turned in more than 23,000 signatures, but Bureau of Elections staff found around 9,400 of them to be invalid, leaving Johnson short of the 15,000 required to be on the ballot. The barricaded gunman situation ends on Detroit's west side. Earlier today, a person barricaded themselves inside a townhouse complex on Van Buren near Joy in the Southfield Freeway. Police say the incident came to a safe resolution, and the person who was in mental distress was taken to a local hospital. The surrounding streets are back open tonight. In Roseville, four people were shot Sunday during what police are calling a domestic dispute. Around 5 p.m., officers arrived at a home off Kelly near 11 Mile and Gratiot. The Roseville police chief says two people who were in a relationship got into an argument, and that led to one person shooting four other people. Police say one victim is in critical condition. Everyone involved has been taken into custody. A 21-year-old motorcyclist is hit and killed by an Uber driver after running out of gas on the side of the road. Police say it happened about 3 o'clock this morning on Mound Road near I-696 in Macomb County. Police tell us the 21-year-old was pushing his bike along the road when the Uber driver hit and killed him.
Police say the Uber driver and the passenger were not hurt as they continue to investigate the circumstances behind that crash. A bipartisan Senate group reaching a framework for stricter gun safety laws. The framework would enhance background checks for gun buyers 18 to 21 years old, requiring them to check with local police. Senators also agreed to help states take guns away from people deemed a threat closing a loophole that allowed some domestic abusers to buy guns. The framework also provides money for school security and mental health resources. Ten Republican senators have signed on to the compromise. This is a positive sign it could get the 60 votes needed to become law. It is a substantial compromise that is um, going to um, stop a lot of suicides, a lot of homicides, um, and save a lot of lives in this country. Undoubtedly, there will be some further tweaks we're continuing to meet. Senators are pushing to vote on the bill in the next couple of weeks and get it to the president's desk by the end of July.